how can we collect data on reaction times? Three students set up an experiment to compare their reaction times using a computer program. Step one, sit in front of a white computer screen. When the screen turns red, click the mouse as quickly as possible. Repeat the experiment three more times. What would the results of this experiment look like? The students put their results in the table below. OK, so this table shows us the reaction time in milliseconds for each repeat of the experiment. So each trial is a different repeat of the experiment. Remember, the reaction time is the time between the screen changing colour and the students responding to this. You can see there's a lot of numbers to compare, so how can we more easily compare these reaction times? If we add a mean column on the end of this table, we can calculate a mean reaction time for each student. This will make the comparison much easier because then we have just one value per student rather than four. Before calculating the mean, we need to identify any anomalies in the data. These are values which stand out from the other repeats. Because they're different from the other values, they're likely to have been caused by an error. The only anomaly in this table is this value here for student C. Remember, when you're calculating a mean, you add up all of the values, then divide by how many there are. So we're going to add up all of these and divide by four. The mean reaction time for student A was 156 milliseconds. Let's do the same for B. So the mean reaction time for student B was 180 milliseconds. And for student C, it was 158 milliseconds. You might have noticed here that we've divided the value by three. That's because we removed the anomaly, so the values we used were these three and not the anomaly. Now we've got the means, how can we plot this on a graph? Here's an example of a question that's asking us to plot a graph of the students' reaction times. To plot a graph of the students' reaction times, the first step is to choose a suitable graph. So the student is a factor that's a discontinuous variable. Each student, A, B or C, is a category. They can't be put onto a continuous number scale. Therefore, the appropriate graph would be a bar chart. What's the next step? Step two, label your axes. So remember which is the X and which is the Y axis. A good way to remember this is Y to the sky and X goes on the bottom. The convention is that the column on the right will go on the Y axis. The column on the right usually shows the results which are the dependent variable. That's what's measured in the experiment. So reaction time is going on the Y axis and remember to include units. In this case, it's milliseconds. And the dependent variable, the student will go on the X axis. And remember, this is a categoric variable. So we can just label this as A, B and C. What do we do now? Step three, make a scale. Now the way to make a scale is to find out the intervals of data that we want to put onto the scale. To do this, find the highest number in the data, which is 180 milliseconds. We can make the graph go up to a nice round 200 milliseconds for the scale. There are 20 small squares available on the y-axis. So if we make 200 the value at 20 squares, then one square is 200 divided by 20, which equals 10 milliseconds. Therefore, 10 milliseconds will be the interval on the scale on the y-axis. Make sure that you write the tiny marker lines next to these numbers so that there's no doubt which place on the graph the number refers to. This frequently leads to lost marks in the exam. Step four, plot the bars. So these bars are going to be showing us the reaction time. And remember, this is going to go on the X axis using the scale on the Y axis. When you're plotting a bar, draw a line for the height first and then draw the rest of the bar. The width of them doesn't matter as long as it's consistent, centered, and that the gaps between the bars are also consistent. What's the next step? Step five, use the graph to interpret the data. Remember, the whole point of graphs is to make data easier to understand. So this value here for student B is the slowest reaction time. Make sure that you avoid the common mistake that the higher value is the faster reaction time. Remember, more time equals a slower reaction. While students A and C got different mean results, the difference between the two is insignificant when we see the data in this context. Thanks for watching. 
If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there!